This is Jim. And Jim's like two in every three Australians in that he's overweight, stressed and tired. He dreams of a miracle pill that will help him lose weight, help improve his mood and self-esteem, give him an energy kick and even ward off a number of serious health conditions like heart disease, diabetes and cancer. Now if you too would like such a miracle pill, I've actually got great news. It exists and it's freely available. It's called exercise. <laughs> And although it won't give Jim quite the level of physical transformation he was thinking of, it does give you all the benefits to health and fitness that I just mentioned. The thing is though, for many of us, exercise can be really hard to do, whether it be due to time constraints, family obligations, or maybe because you just don't like it. To make matters even worse, what if I told you that some of the things that you do after exercise could actually counter some of the benefits of the work you just did? So picture this. You've actually found the time and motivation to do some exercise. Well done. You get home and on the kitchen bench is a big slice of the best looking chocolate cake that you've ever seen. Now why wouldn't you indulge? The thing is though, unhealthy eating on a regular basis, things like cake, can also affect your weight, your mood, your energy levels, your risk of heart disease, diabetes and cancer, but in the opposite direction to exercise, potentially undoing the good work that you've just done. So that's where our research comes in. We've shown that the way that you exercise can actually affect the likelihood of you consuming unhealthy but tasty foods in the aftermath of your workout. For instance, we've shown that if you add short bursts or short sprints to your workout, you'll actually eat less calories at the next meal. Or if you make active choices over things like the type, the timing and the duration of exercise, you're less likely to eat unhealthy foods in the hours that follow. Now, we're all human and we all deserve a treat sometimes, but these are just two examples of how small changes to the way that you exercise can impact what you eat afterwards. And it's small changes that really add up to large benefits to our health and fitness in the long term. So we know that a lack of exercise is one of the leading causes of death worldwide. And we also know that a lack of exercise um, causes a significant burden on our society and community. Our ongoing research aims to identify the optimal way to exercise to promote healthy food choices afterwards so that we can all achieve the full benefits um, of health uh, and well-being from exercise. And this benefits not only the individual like Jim, but the overall health of our nation. Thank you.